Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to The Big Debate, coming to you live on SABC2, SABC News Channel 404 and SAFM. Now, we're also live on SABC New News YouTube channel. My name is Ridi Klabi. So, over a million babies are born in our public health facilities each year. Four million people receive antiretrovirals in the largest HIV treatment program in the world. 300,000 are treated for TB. That's no mean feat. But before you celebrate a reality check, please, many hospitals are in a shocking state. Six times more women die during childbirth in South Africa than in other similar countries. Claims of medical negligence are skyrocketing. The total value of claims in the Eastern Cape alone, listen to this, is equal to three times the province's annual health budget. Perhaps you count yourself lucky to have private health insurance, <laughs> but private health costs five times more than the public system, and money is wasted. The company that owns your health insurer may also own the hospital that treats you. A convenient setup for pushing up profits. Many drug companies also profit from our misery. Should all South Africans be under a national health insurance scheme where costs are controlled and we pay according to what we earn? If so, how can we ensure the government won't loot our money and run our hospitals into the ground? In short, how can we provide quality, affordable health care to all South Africans. Now with me to discuss this, Minister of Health, Aaron Muzwaledi, Dr. Aaron Muzwaledi, Simon Lungwani, President of the Democratic Nursing Association of South Africa, Dr. Jose Litlape, an ophthalmologist and chair of the Health Professions Councils, Council of South Africa, Stavos Nicolau from Aspen Pharmaceuticals and chairperson of pharmaceuticals manufactured in South Africa, that's FAMISA. Anele Yawa of the Treatment Action Campaign, Alex van der Heerfe, Vets School of Governance, Zbongi Lengosi, CEO of Health E News. We also have Noma French Mbombo, Western Cape MEC for Health, Chris Archer, obstetrician and CEO of South African Private Practitioners Forum, Rajesh Patel of the Board of Healthcare Funders, Mfundisi Mabalani of the South African National AIDS Council, Mia Malan, editor of Begisisa, Lillian Dube, beloved actress and cancer survivor, Mzwandile Makwaiba, president of Nehau, and David Saunders of the People's Health Movement. And of course, communities and healthcare users and activists from across the country, they are all here. Welcome, all of you. Thank you, thank you. So, so quickly, you at home can have your say, give us your views on social media and vote in our poll. Our question tonight, should the minister prioritize the NHI or fix public hospitals first? The results so far, very interesting, of 5,000 votes, 87% of you say focus on public hospitals. Your vote is free. But before we start our discussion, take a look at this. The fire in Gauteng Health Department last year brings to mind the crisis across our public health sector. Discovery's 3 billion rand glitzy headquarters symbolizes another crisis, the soaring costs and profits in private health. The private sector has as much money for 9 million people as the public sector spends on the other 48 million. South Africa is the only country in the whole, on the whole planet that spends so much money on so few people and spend so little money on so many people. It doesn't make sense. And the aim of NHI is to try and do away with uh, 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 that structural anomaly. The NHI aims to pull money from the public and private sector, reducing costs and increasing access. But with so many health challenges, it has been slow to get off the ground. On 5th January, Milton Goveni took his wife, Molebucheng, to Mamelodi Hospital. She was seven months pregnant and had been feeling pains. She was a bit scared, but joyful at the very same time, because trusting me, she couldn't, she, like, every now and then she would be like, baby, check the tummy, the baby's moving, like all those things. She, she, she couldn't wait. Milton tried in vain to get staff to attend to Molebucheng. 20 minutes later, both his wife and unborn child were dead. I saw negligence. Nurses, they see patient, 
that are in an emergency state, but they are doing nothing about it. So it, it, it was an issue of a chaotic health system and a, f a total failure because if you are unable to save both, then try to save one. That was my statement. I would love to have them both alive, but in this sense, try by all means to, to show that you are doing something. Milton's lodged a complaint, but three months later, he has heard nothing. His is not the first allegation of poor service at Mamelodi Hospital. When former public protector Tulima Donzela visited in 2016, she found overcrowding and a chronic lack of staff. With the current setup, nurses are so overburdened, they are so overwhelmed with their work. Simon Shungwani of Nursing Union Denosa says the shortage of funding is not the only problem. Even if you can pump a lot of billions and billions into NHI, if there's no leadership that is willing to put systems in place, nothing will change. According to the Auditor General, provincial health departments are suffering from a vicious cycle of financial mismanagement and spiraling claims for damages. In April last year, the Northwest Department was put under administration amidst allegations of procurement corruption. Activists point to corruption in the private sector too. Private hospitals in Gauteng have five times more ICU beds per capita than Switzerland. The more of those beds they fill, the more money they make. I think every structure is vulnerable to corruption, even public, public or private. Right? So we, we saw, for instance, in the over-servicing over of patients. That's a corrupt practice. If you're selling, giving someone a service that they don't need... A positive effect of the NHI might be to force private hospitals and doctors to reduce wastage. At the moment, a private healthcare practitioner in the country can ask you as much as they want. They are, there's no set fees. So you, you can really make up the price that you, that you charge your patients. The NHI says no, they will be prescribed rates. Back in Mamilodi, Milton also supports the NHI, but wants to see the public system fixed first. He's been back to the hospital where he lost his wife and child more times than he can remember, looking for answers. Each and every time when I go there, first thing that comes to my mind is how many people are dying of the very same treatment as she did. So many people are losing their life we, we, without nurses or doctors taking it serious. We're going to hear... We're going to hear from Milton later on. But Minister, let me start with you. You've been on the big debate about four times. We've spoken about the NHI close to 10 years. And if I can use the free state where maternal mortality, you are three times likely to die when you're giving birth in the free state hospital than in a Western Cape hospital. The queues are getting longer. There's overcrowding. Medical malpractice claims are going up. You failed, South Africans. Well... Really, I, I, I can't talk about your emotions or your feelings. I can't control them. All I can do is to give figures. Mm. For instance, you mentioned there that our maternal mortality is, is very high, is the highest than you know, other countries. But we know that there were three things that drive maternal mortality in South Africa. And the first one was HIV and AIDS. And we have got the highest incidence of HIV and AIDS in the world. 50% of maternal mortality is HIV and AIDS. We have worked very hard. That's why we put that world's biggest program. In 2009, maternal mortality was 306 per 100,000 uh, uh, births. Mm. It is now down to 136. It's because of the work we are doing. That, that could not have happened if we did not do that work. Now, it's still six states, times higher than other developing countries. Yes, because we have got the biggest HIV-AIDS program, I mean, uh, infection in the world. We, we form 0.1% of the world population, but we contribute 19% of the HIV-AIDS infections. Mm. Now, when you look at HIV in, in the country, Free State is number three in the country. Number one is KZN, followed by Mpumalanga and Pumalanga. KZN. Now, you mentioned Western Cape, which is very good, and, and we are happy about that. But Western Cape is number nine. It has got the highest, the lowest HIV AIDS infection in the whole country. Mm -hmm. And that's why their maternal mortality will be also be the lowest, right. because it's the, it's the biggest driver. Right. But, now, but Anel, isn't it time to then cut the minister some slack? 
when it comes to tuberculosis deaths, we've halved those between 2009 and 2015. They've gone down by half. More people are on HIV treatment. More are on TB treatment. Cut him some slack. They're doing something. Yes, yes. Uh, our government did something. But also we must not beat about the bush. We had to force the government of Tabombeki and the Mando Chabalam Simang to That's save the past, but yes. right now isn't the minister on the right track? No, he's not on the right track. The audience is answering for you, but complete yeah, your thoughts. The please. minister is not on the right track. Why am I saying that? The population of South Africa is about 57 million and about 45 million people are public health care users. And those public health care users are only serviced by a health care workforce that is, is below 500,000. How does the minister expect about less than 500,000 nurses and doctors to service about 45 million? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why, the other thing we do not understand, why is our government freezing post within the healthcare system? Yeah. You want to look at the because we cannot expect a healthcare system that will work for the people if the health providers are not happy. When they are not happy, they vent their anger to the healthcare users. That's why many people are walking away of the healthcare services because nurses, when they are frustrated by the minister in this department, Let's we give are the, the ones who are Okay, you've made some allegations. Let's give the minister another chance to respond to all of that. Minister? He, he is right about the figures and about the number of health workers. He is definitely right, except that I know why he's blaming me. The bottom line here really is, yes, the bottom line, exactly why we, went in, we want NHI. The bottom line is that we are the only country in the whole world which is spending 4.5% of the GDP on health for 16% of the population mm. and spend 4.2% for 84% for of the population. If, if we can't equalize that, I will never get it right. I mean, the things right as he is asking. But Take minister, for instance. Sorry, 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 but, but Minister, our NHI is still xenophobic. Okay. It doesn't talk about all, it talks only about South Africans. Mm -hmm. Yet, Section okay, 27 of the Constitution speaks about health care services for all. Okay, we'll get to that in just a moment. But, Minister, you've just given us figures I fi about no, no, GDP. Let me finish. Okay, yes, let, let, me let him finish. finish, yeah? Yes, I, and, and uh, I think he has disturbed my thought process. <laughs> I'll, help I, you. I I'll help you along. No, just 4% no, yes, no, no. GDP I and in the private the sector for about 8%. And yeah? that has even been proved by the World Organization. We are spending 4.5% of the gross domestic product. On 16 percent, yes, on 16 percent of the population, and 4.2 on 40. I mean, on 84 percent of the population. What has that brought? Take, for instance, in the last three years, because of the economic problems, the public sector lost nine billion rand. Mm. Treasury just said, "We sorry, we don't have that amount of money." The, 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 everybody knows what happened to the economy of South Africa. But in the same period, the private sector gained 11. Billion. Let's get from, from the, the public. So you, you're to blame. I mean, we, we invited medical aid companies. They would, didn't have the fortitude to be with you amongst the people, some of them who are clients. But come on. We know that you produced generic ARVs uh, for the public sector, the private sector, and we appreciate all of that. But surely there's got to be an efficient way of making medicine and healthcare affordable to so many so that the, the, the focus is not on the bottom line. Stubbs. So Really, thanks very much. Firstly, let me say I'm here representing the pharmaceutical sure, industry this evening. Sure, it's a private entity, yeah. And we, we're actually, I need to preface what I'm going to say by, I don't think anyone would dispute that universal coverage, or if you want to call it NHI in a different name, is a, is a solution long term. What I do want to say, however, with respect to pharmaceuticals, we're the only sector that services both public and private sector. So all 57 million people living in our country are serviced by the pharmaceutical industry. And what, just on the pricing issue that you're raising, I, I want to make, this is a not a very well-known uh, set of data, so let me just get straight to the point. A generic product in the, pro in the public sector costs 14 rand a pack, so 50 cents a day. There are not a lot of things in life that you can buy for 50 cents a day, okay. In the private sector, you can treat 80% of conditions for under 75 rand. The average across the two sectors is under 50 rand a month. 
Mm. So what I'm saying, where is the problem? The problem lies with 20 or 30 molecules. And we've discussed this with the minister previously. Mm -hmm. We need a solution around those 20 or 30 because those 20 or 30 are attracting all the attention. Then the public thinks the medicine prices are high. When in fact, if you look at the dates the set I gave you, it's actually not but, the but case. But I'm finding that hard to believe. I mean, just recently you spoke at the Global Fair Pricing Forum mm -hmm. and we've got a whole lot of interest groups in South crazy. Africa calling for lower prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are not crazy. They're not going to just data. mobilize really? because happy there is no data. problem. And yeah. there is some treatment of cancer that costs in South Africa about uh, 800, 500,000 mm -hmm. rand yes. for some plasma cell in cancer. And in 30, India, yeah. you'll pay yeah. about 21,000 rand if I remember. So you're not. No, no. Those are in the 20 or 30 but, but there's 18,000 products available in South Africa okay but we can't the 20 or 30 those we're not and we're saying we need we've been in concert yeah. the minister's taken the lead here he's taken the lead his department they're saying those 20 or 30 we've got to find a solution but let's not forget there's 18 other thousand products yeah. that are highly affordable in this country so Alex we've got to be grateful the private sector is doing its bit well when you look at the failures of both the public and the private health system, they depend, they are driven fundamentally by the governance framework that mm -hmm. is in place. Mm -hmm. So you can blame actors within the system, both in the public and the private, but it is down to the way in which the system is regulated and structured. And there is a fundamental problem with the way both systems are structured. A health system is extremely complex. Mm -hmm. It's a multiple systems that are operating within that. So on the private sector side, it is not only the prices that are an issue, it's about the volumes that are sold. So when you take volume and price together in the private sector, you've got extraordinarily high costs in the system. In the public system, we've also had a surge in costs which have affected how many people can be employed. We've also got in the public system structural moonlighting. We've got people who are meant to be working there in nurses and doctors who Going are working the in private. the private sector. And that reduces the amount of people that are available to treat patients. And it explains in many cases why those medical legal cases are a problem. And I think that those are, cannot be addressed unless government regulates the system properly. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't done that mm -hmm. for certainly the we'll last 10 years. We'll give the minister a chance to respond, but somebody whom mm -hmm. I know would get excited when we get the word regulate the private sector mm -hmm. is Dr. It's not Dr. only Corsini regulate Gladwell. the private sector, it's the private and the public. Pub uh, happy birthday, by the way. How do we bring all of this together? I think you bring it by going back to the beginning mm -hmm. where the minister speaks about 4.5% for 16% of the population and 4.2% for 84% of the population. And therein lies the problem. And if you can't fix that, you won't fix anything. If there's no courage to attend to that, nothing else will work. What should we do? You see, the problem is that you have apartheid in health. Mm -hmm. And it was properly, <laughs> it was properly designed and handed over to the new government. Mm -hmm. People are talking about a failure of the healthcare system since 1994. The failure is since the Soweto riots of 1976. So the inequality continues. And, and it's been properly engineered by those that ruled before to get to where we are, where you have separated the South African population along public or private. It used to be along black and white. and until until that is addressed, all these problems will not go away. There is no way, and, and whatever people say, given the resources that the public sector has and the number of people dependent on it without being xenophobic, it's nothing short of a miracle what they do. Hold with thought. all the disasters that occur in that sector. Hold that thought. We'll come back to that because this is a very, very, very important. We'll delve into that in just a moment. When we return as well, we talk to two people who've lost family members in public hospitals. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone, to the big debate on health. Coming to you on SABC2 and SABC News Channel 404. Now, in our film, we saw a gentleman called Milton from Mamilodi. Milton's wife tragically died in January at Mamilodi Hospital. She was seven months pregnant, and the baby died too. When we interviewed him, he told us that he struggled to get anyone to help him at the hospital, and he doesn't know what 
if anything, was done to try to save his wife and child. Let's talk to Milton. Okay, Milton, since we last filmed, have you heard anything? What would you like to see happen? Uh, to be honest... Can you stand up, please, Milton? Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, to be honest, uh, I won't lie to you. We, we, as the TAC comrades, including myself, we have been going to those facilities just to seek for answers. Until today, none is ready or no one is ready to, to take or maybe allow us to understand what went through. Th was there any acknowledgement? Let's not even talk about okay. the investigation. Was there any acknowledgement of your letter, of your inquiry? None. I won't lie to none. What happens when you go to the hospital? Uh, in most cases when we go there, we are told that uh, give us sort of a period of 10 days, come back and maybe we'll, we'll be having clarity or maybe more information about those what issues. What do you want to see happen? What do you want? What's in your heart? To, to be honest, uh, I want to see the healthcare facility or the primary healthcare to be in a better space right. whereby we see young and old being uh, well taken care of. Prioritize if maybe we see it's an emergency. Because within the, the, the public health care, we, we are not taken serious, to be honest. Yeah. And we, we still continue to see those rude nurses and doctors claiming or thinking they have made it in life. And for, for, for us, okay, quickly. For us as the, the society, we, we need to be radical in, uh, in readdressing these issues. Okay, listen, um, Malton, I'm so sorry for your loss. I really am. And I think three months later, for you to come here and speak to the public is such a brave act. And I'm really, really sorry for your loss. Thank you for coming. Okay. Oh, you want to speak to that issue? Yeah. I, I think we have loss in the country. And when we trained as young people, we used to have committees inside hospitals. Mm. And where I trained, it was not accepted for a mother to die or for a baby to die. So there were meetings that were held where those cases would be interrogated. And the question would be, how do we ensure that this doesn't happen again? Okay. Now, it means certain basic processes are not being followed. Like? Having those meetings. Yeah. You know, when you have an, un an unnatural death, there has to be an inquest in law. So you shouldn't struggle to have answers. Mm. And sadly, this problem is not only in the public sector. It's a problem in our healthcare system. Mm. I buried a sister-in-law that went to a private hospital <coughs> that was taken to theater that died within a day. And she had a speedily produced death certificate and no inquest was ordered. Mm. That's unlawful. So there are things that are happening that are unlawful. Indeed. And, and we can't sit here and blame the state and blame the minister. We must all become informed but and we must all agitate. Okay, hold on. No, no, but, no. But it is better. Hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, No, he needs answers. Okay, wait, wait, wait. And the system wait, wait. should be able to provide okay, him with what's your question? Answers. Hold on, Can Kossi. Question? But keep yes. in mind that yes. the medical malpractice yes. claims, even in the private sector, yes. have gone up. Just very no, quickly. I want to hear from Dinosa. So, so, so. Hold on, Kossi. Hold on. No, no, no. No, I'm not letting you finish. You ask your question. No is blaming the minister here. We need to accept that the health system of South is broken. All of We don't have clinic committees. Clinic committees are extension of political parties. Okay. How do you expect them to challenge the system? How do you expect them to challenge the system? Okay, I, I, wait. I think, Hold on. I think we, we shouldn't fall into the trap of doing this binary and competition between public and private. While it's relevant, hold on, while it's relevant, it's important to note, at least that's how I feel as a private medical aid holder, I feel that the citizen and the patient is worse off and is being messed around by either side using different levels. We'll get to that in just a moment. Just hold on. But Dinosa, I want you to answer because Milton said in the insert that the nurses just didn't take it seriously. And I also asked with tears in my eyes, I've dealt with this for so many years as a journalist. I had a woman give birth on a street corner in Alex after the nurses turned that woman away. And I have a mother who was gravely ill late last year and was in the public sector. The operation was successful, but she nearly died because of the nursing care in the private hospital. So what do your members say? Well, um, firstly, we must be sympathetic to what uh, happened. And I think, uh, uh, firstly, we must understand where is the problem. And for you to understand where is the problem, you must also check as to whether do we have solutions to it or not. Yes. Uh, in this regard, I would think uh, 
ordinarily and according to the law and the practices within the department, should, should there be any adverse event, there should be a quality assurance that investigate internally and provide answers to that effect. So it then tells you that there's a problem within the system. Now, if you don't address systemic issues, you're still going to continue to have a problem. What do you furthermore. think those systems now, are? Is it the hospital advisory board, the, the boards no, no, that no. are more advisory? If than any hospital must have a quality assurance where a person has the right to go and complain mm. where they are aggrieved by anything. Mm. And they must respond to you <coughs> at a reasonable time and provide redress. But what about While the commitment of the nurses? Because I'm let thinking those are that. systemic issues. Let but at the time that. that I arrive at reception, let, let I need that. you to respond to my let problem. Let me get to that. Already. Understand the system in this way. Yeah. In the past, we had 46 million uh, population. Now we have 57 million people. In the past, we used to have people when they retire, they die, or they resign. They used to be replaced. Now we have a system where you retire, you die, you resign, you are never replaced. Yeah. We, in the past, we used to produce a certain number of nurses. Right now, all, most co colleges <coughs> were closed down. Nobody opened them. The intake went down. In the past, when we used to work in a, in a, in a setup of a, of a clinic or a, or a hospital in any particular way, there used to be a way of making sure that the staff complement is, is adequate. So you right understand. Now, nurses are burned out. Nobody replaces nurses in the intake. Everything is just gone down to we'll a give system the where we don't have a human resource plan. Nobody knows how many nurses we need for the country. Okay, Nobody we'll give the minister that. a chance there to respond no to this. Uh, many sectors. Okay, okay. All right. So many sectors. Many people have raised this, the uh, staff shortages and the freezing of posts. We'll give the minister a chance to speak to that. And Beggy Sisa, you'll also join us in our conversation. And also when we return, we speak to one of our most loved actresses, Lillian Dube. And Lillian is also an outspoken cancer survivor. You are watching The Big Debate. Stay with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the big debate on health. Famous actress Lillian Dube underwent surgery for breast cancer in 2008. Her cancer was not picked up the first time she went for a mammogram. She has used her experience to spread awareness about the disease and she has broken through taboos by advising women and men not to be shy of talking about feeling their boobs. So let's talk to Lillian Dube. So there you are on every platform, just telling everybody to just feel it. Suck those titties, I say. <laughs> oh. All right, what does that mean? Yes, I'm glad you asked that. When I say you must suck those titties, it's not for curing, it's for detecting. If you are in the habit of sucking your wife or your girlfriend's titties, you are the first one to detect a lump. And many a man have saved their women by doing that. And you ladies don't just lie there when you are being sucked. Also, <laughs> ladies, listen carefully. Don't squeeze those bolekis. I used to say squeeze them. The men say <coughs> it's not comfortable. <laughs> Brush them nicely. If the man says a na or whatever, testicular cancer. So when I say suck those titties, it's for detection. Early detection and early treatment. So some clever blacks say, don't listen to Lillian. She's a clown. I'm not saying it, it will heal, yeah. but it will detect and then you go and get treated. But you didn't just stop there. You are mobilizing for medical aid for actresses and actors because they can't afford it. But at the same time, we have the NHI, which will bring all of us into the same pool and create inequality. How do you feel about that? Rudy, I'm sorry. I've been speaking to Ndate Mona. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. For me, this NIH, you know I love you, Dr. Muswa Lady. I respect you. I will, I will never say, N whatever. NHI. You're not you. <laughs> For me, it is RDP of the health services. So, so, so what do you want? What do you want? What are you doing? I want the hospitals that are existing to work to work and i want to know why were the nursing colleges closed today you get to charlotte McClure. that's where because you can I don't find expect the next to say okay biggie sister how do we bring we're going to go to the minister just now how 
how do we bring that? How do we bring this together? I think, I think, I think with, with the NHIs, they still pick, and this is what we see, in, right? Policy just lives there, and actually doesn't go on the ground, and people don't understand it, right? So the minister in 2013 came out and said, "Oh, we're re-engineering the primary health care, right? We're going to bring." Um, um, some community healthcare workers, which I see here today, well, yeah. school health is going to be part of it, and the whole infrastructure of of public clinics and public hospital is going to change, right? And then, you know, we hear 2015, right? We're still waiting for the minister to tell us the implementation of it, right? Was there an M and E framework that was put to actually show that? like the implementation of the community health care workers worked. We don't know. The school health, right? How many children were detected? Do we have the figures of how much will it cost for, 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 to actually run the piloting, the, the piloting of the NHI? We don't have those figures. And for me, I think, again, going back to the community health care workers, right, there, there's such a, 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 a overemphasis of how import, the importance in which they play in health care. But right. yet we saw in the, free, in the free state what happened to the community health care workers. Mm -hmm. Some of the issues that Lillian Mamalini is, is addressing could be addressed by the community health care okay, workers. And they are here right? in numbers. Here we'll hear numbers, from them right? in just a moment. But Minister, there's so many questions that have been directed at you. And I'm thinking the most basic and simple question. How do we convince someone like Lillian Dube and any skeptic out there that the NHI is the answer? Yes. First of all, Mama Lillian, I, I also respect you too. There's no NHI will be the RDP. But let's, let me start here yeah, with the president of Dinosa. And I'm not going to challenge him because it is true. And I've started with it. We have got the severe shortage of staff why? in the public health sector. The people are asking why. Yes. I, I've tried to explain it from the beginning. That if you spend, Let him speak. If you spend so much money as we're doing on a few people, that's where staff will go. People follow money. And that's a fact everywhere in the world. When you spend so much money for so, for so few people, in the area where there are many people who have lesser staffing, and I've just given a second example, which you are suffering from, from the healthcare system, that in the past three years, when the economy started tangering, mm. we lost nine billion rand in the public healthcare sector. And most of it was in two areas, human resources and infrastructure. We lost it there. Now, in the private sector, because of the structural imbalances which we are trying to change, they gained 11 billion rand. That means those who are already well, well to do. With 11 billion, I can hire 20,000 health workers immediately. Now, when you want to change that structurally through the NHI bill, people say, no, stop, fix the public health care system. Then it's then that will bring NHI. If we can fix it, Without bringing this NHI, then we don't need to NHI. Okay, okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody, everybody wants it. Mia, no, Mia no, Malan. No, no. Whoa, whoa, hold on. No, no, no. Mia Malan. Now, okay, now, finish your now, thought, and then now. Mia, we're coming to you. Now, fix it. But, fixing but the public. The minister must tell us what did he do from 2012 to 2017? NHI pilot. Okay, you we, have to, we, we need to be given answers. He what is. progress have we made from 2012 to 2017? Let him speak. Just to add to that, that six public health care facilities out of 696 passed the test and got 80%. So people are saying it's not working. No, what no, are you no. saying? Ready. Changing the public health care system and implementing NHI are not mutually exclusive things. One is intended to, pro to, 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 to what you call to, yes, to improve the other. They are not mutually exclusive. You can't say, it's like a debate on chicken and egg. It will never end. What comes first between chicken and egg? What comes first between NH yes, between I mean, NHI and, uh, and the private Rajesh, the yes. private sector has a lot to answer for. No. The public sector, nothing was done. No, no, no. The private nothing. sector has a lot no, to no, answer, no. For, ask, answer for. You are the reason we are here, and I'm sorry that you have to answer these questions because the medical aides just didn't have the guts to come here. Okay, let's go. Board of Healthcare Funders, it's your fault. Is it our fault? Um, I think if you look at the private sector, the strengthening of the strengthening of the private sector stemmed from the 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. Now I was saying this, the strengthening of the private sector stemmed from the 1980s when the apartheid government was bankrupt. It couldn't manage all the people in so the country. So now, right here so in So it strengthened the private sector, and more people were employed. Well, they'll look after themselves. Unfortunately, that led to a situation where you got 
the disparities that we see but in the current the health system. But you have the power to change that right now. We, to some extent, what's within our powers, definitely we must change it. To some extent, BHF has been providing some of the direction. Unfortunately, Alex has said, we've got a structural system that's fundamentally flawed. I know Discovery is not one of your members, but no. you know, when I drive down there and this three billion rand building and all of that stuff, and uh, GPs are being prescribed fees and uh, funds run out and so on, that's untenable. What do we do? I think, for starters, this, the Medical Schemes Act we got is fundamentally flawed. It needs massive change. You say it must be abolished. I know okay. Kosi says it must be abolished, yeah? And fortunately, there's a bill, and we're waiting for the health market inquiry. It's very interesting what's coming out of the health market inquiry as well. But are it's your members that. guilty of all of this? Are you the problem? Yes. yes. Medical aid. Yes. Okay, the people say yes. Mia Malan, Mia Malan, Mia Malan, Mia, Mia, Mia Malan, quickly, quickly, you've got the mic. I would like to get back to what the minister said. Okay, let Mia speak. So the minister said the NHI and fixing the hospitals are not mutually exclusive. He does have some sort of point because when we implemented abortion legislation in the late 90s, we certainly didn't have the facilities ready to do them and we, and we implemented it. We didn't wait until everything was ready. But the issue that has been raised here, the common theme is a accountability. Mm. Health workers may be overworked, but there is not enough count accountability. Mm. We have people like Kudani Mahlangu walking around and who has not been held accountable for life is the many. We've got Brian Hlongwa walking around and the minister can certainly um, take a compliment for having expanded our HIV program to the largest one in the world. But this week, a health department delegation will be going to America because they're going to cut our HIV funding mm. because the program is not performing well. We don't manage nope. to keep people on treatment. Mm. So that is a good example of when you expand services so drastically, there are a lot of challenges that your system need to be able to cope with. And the NHI is going to be that in many aspects of health. Minister said no, we're going to give him a chance to speak. We're going to give him a chance to speak in just a moment. I promise, Minister, I'm coming to you. But he is the minister. You're all directing questions at him. Let him answer in just a moment. Okay, okay, okay. Are we ready for national health insurance or do we need to fix public health facilities first? Don't forget to vote in our poll. Results after the break. Welcome back. Welcome back to the big debate on health. We asked you whether Minister Mutsualedi should prioritize the NHI or fix public hospitals first. The results are in. 83% of you say focus on public hospitals. Let's hear the views of our studio audience and keeping in mind that there's so many questions for the minister, we've got to give him a chance to, ask, to ask, uh, answer them. But Ms. Uh, Noma French from the Western Cape, you are the MEC. What's your comment? Um, it's true. The health system is dysfunctional, both private and public. And when you look in terms of the public, the issue of the leadership and the governance is one of those. And the audience mentioned the issue of the HR, which is true about it. I've got a faith in our health workers, whether doctors or nurses, the mere fact that they are being poached overseas, it means that there's something about them that is efficient. <laughs> However, uh, However, the NHI, the NHI is not the solution because it needs more of that. For example, within the NHI, it doesn't talk much about the social determinants. It doesn't talk about much about the community engagement mm. and even how it's going to be funded. Everyone does support the universal health coverage with cross subsidization and uh, financial risk protection. And most importantly, the quality of care. Right. The, 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 fa the problems we have with the public sector is not as a result of a private but also the private also needs the regulation. There are things that we can need, we can do from ourselves. The political interference is one of those. So the, with the NHI, that's gonna centralize everything. How do you entrust one politician if nine of them probably have messed up? Okay, mm. Tebukho, there's Tebukho in the audience. Tebukho, you want to ans ask a question? Yes, very quickly. Mm. We're gonna give the minister really. a chance to speak, yeah? Uh, I want to know, we have a problem in the township that we stayed in. The ambulances doesn't come in when you call them, and sometimes, like me, I'm staying with my mother. My mother is an elderly woman. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you call the ambulance at night, they say you must get out and go stand in the street. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, sometimes, mm -hmm. 
uma mamu uyafona ngokuwa uzophuma kanjani umuntu omdala aye ngaphandle ayomele ambulance okay. enye AS2 wenqelo kuyibuza ku minister minister abo sisibethu laba ama healthcare workers bana sikhathe sithe besebenza akuna sizwa abalitholayo bahola imali encane bathola ama 3 months contract abasayinwayo niyenzani ngabo okay. okay. all right okay. Okay. Just, just a quick translation just a quick translation the boy lives with his elderly, elderly mom when they call the ambulance they ask to wait in the street and he says he's not over is there how is his elderly mom going to wait in the street waiting for an ambulance and you asked a question about community health care workers and I know that in the latest budget salary is going up 3,500 rand but you're not happy with that there are other structural problems your question very quickly before we go to the minister yes me. Yes, oh, you've got a microphone. Quickly, quickly, ready, quickly, yeah. ready. Uh, the NHIS says CHWs are the heartbeat of the health system. Yeah. But they are not because mm -hmm. they are not included in the health system. Mm -hmm. They are disrespected, abused. They're not. They are still signing contracts. They are earning 3.5. They are not taken as a heartbeat. There's no NHI because they have no There's heartbeat. No okay, China, China. There's where no are you sitting? Flow. China. Okay, Minister, can you answer to some of those? I can't see yes. China well, right now. Well, yeah? lady, I, uh, firstly. I, I, I did ask the producers of this program that if they invite one MEC, they must invite all because we've got nine MECs. Yes. There is only one, and the position she put is a DA position, ideological position. I just want you to know that. Because the DA said they don't want any child, they want But OHS, that's why it's a debate, because it's polarized position. There's yes, no point no, bringing so eight people who you agree with you. That is an ideological position that's okay. of the party. Yes, and that's, that's healthy one. in a democracy. You have two different yes. positions, not community, nine similar positions. Community health workers. Community health workers. I ah, ah, let the minister answer, guys. Okay, hold on, hold on. But he hasn't said anything. He has not. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let the minister speak. Let him, but but he, but he didn't. He didn't complete the question. He didn't complete the answer. Minister, carry on, please. Yes. Let him speak. Yes. Let him speak. Ready. Let him in speak. In the NHI white paper, everything in the bill, we said clearly that the heartbeat of NHI is going to be primary health care. Mm. And primary health care rests on community health workers. Mm. The fact that we have not yet solved their problem mm. now does not mean that it's not in our plans. We even said we are going to... No, no, no. I'm talking about community health workers. Because that's a question that was raised. Community okay. health workers are a game changer in the health care system. You acknowledge that. We, yeah. Yes. The fact that we have not yet done what they want now and finalized the issue of not being... I am the one, by the way, at the World Health Organization. When they pass the, the, the health, economic growth and employment uh, 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 program by the UN, when they said we must, the world must hire 40 million health workers by 2030, I'm the one who insisted that that 40 million must include primary health care, I mean community health care workers. They must, they must not be brought to us via NGOs or churches or what. They must be part, part of the, the health care system. Now that we have not yet solved that problem, does not mean that it's not in our plans. Is it going to be still, solved soon? Of course, yes, we are doing something. We want to solve it soon. But no, let, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Minister, carry on, your mic is on. You've got to let, you've got to let the minister answer. You've got to let, you've got to let him answer. You can't ask him questions. You can't ask him questions and not answer. Let him answer. Of course. Let him answer. Let him answer. Let him answer. Maybe I, I want to, I want to finish No, but you asked him a question. Maybe. You asked him. Minister, Maybe. please. I want to finish it. Yeah. Let him finish. Let we, him finish. We, we, we accepted, we passed this international health council. Let, let him answer. Yeah, let him we, answer. Uh, we answered this. But there's one other question. No, no, let me leave it. It's in our plans. And it's not about them, it's about the community. Right. By the way. Now, the last thing. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention. Okay, so what what we're hearing, what we're hearing is that community healthcare work. workers are concerned about safety. No, no. As well. Okay, hold on. Ready? Hold on. Let me finish. Finish. Carry on. Your mic is on. Your ma but Ready. you spoke. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ready. Minister. There's one question I want to answer. Hold on. Let him answer. Let him answer. Minister. There's one thing I want to answer, especially from the nurses. Let him answer. There are a lot of. Yes. Okay, I understand. I, I, there are a lot of questions that were directed at the minister. Let him answer them. Because there's so many issues and they're when, all complex. Let him answer. I know. Yes. Let him answer. When, minister? Yes. When, ready. When the president 
came with the issue of stimulus budget is because I'm the one who took this issue of shortage of nursing staff, etc., to a presidential coordinating committee where all the premiers and the president sit. I told them we've got this crisis because our budget is being cut. That's why it came with the stimulus. But I want to say this to health workers. I respect them and I'm, I'm one of them. But I want to say compassion, compassion and sympathy doesn't depend on numbers. It depends on the heart of an individual. During the up, yes. We have to take a break. We have to take a break. We have to take a break. When we return, we have to take a break. We have to take a break. When we return, we get the last word from our panel in this hour of the big debate. Don't go away. Again, from the big debate live in Johannesburg, we're talking about healthcare. It's very heated. We're going to get the final word from our panel in this first hour of our debate. The debate does continue. Very quickly, let's just hear from you. What are your grievances? And I hope that afterwards we're going to give the minister a chance to answer them very quickly. Yes. Um, okay, where's the microphone? My, my, my first question is to the minister. The minister said on November last year, he called us at Nazrek. And the minister said the community care workers are going to be a permanent uh, structure of the Department of Health. We were running up and down happy that we are now going to be permanent, only to find out when he went to one of his campaigns at Daviton, he changed the story. We have the video. He said that now uh, when, when, the, the, when the care workers were asking him if we are permanent uh, employees, why are we signing a one-year contract? He said, no, 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 I didn't say you are permanent. I said I am absorbing. So we want to know what exactly is absorbing. Because maybe we are mentally disturbed. Okay, very quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly, speak, speak. Who are you? Where are you from? The dream of, 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 of the NHI is a beautiful dream that we all are embracing. That's number one. That we mustn't be construed. Second, it's important Use to Use this understand one. That one broke down, yeah? Quickly. It is important to understand that the NHI will not kick unless the nurses of South Africa are actually the ones that are going to run the NHI. Yeah. The, it, it's easy. We form bulk of the 50% of the healthcare providers, without doubt. The primary healthcare that we are talking about, the engineering, we form 80% of that. As nurses, the minister has neglected. He's right. Like the stimulus package was just not enough. The nurses are not being hurt. The, the colleges are being closed. We are not training any nurses. Our healthcare, the stories like that will continuously happen. It's a Hold thought. of an iceberg. Hold that thought. We'll continue in the second hour of the debate. South Africa has a huge health sector. Everybody has a vested interest. There are high emotions. People feel that the rules don't go far. Let's wait and carry on with the second hour of the debate. Thank you for watching this part. Let me start with Mia, because she said the Americans, who are funding us quite handsomely, I must admit, are taking back their money because we we not uh, 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 what way did you use we not performing yes <laughs> yes I want you to take that with a pinch of salt the problem is that Donald Trump is taking away money from most parts of the world generally and the United Especially Nations to countries as well. which don't agree with him and I'm not responsible for foreign policy I just wanted to clear that that take it with a pinch of salt community health workers are angry they can protest, and I, I understand them. <coughs> but I repeat, we want community health workers to be a permanent feature of the workforce of the country, <laughs> because that is a game changer. Yeah. What they are going through now is a process. I didn't change any statement. I, I'm repeating it here. That we want them to be a, a permanent feature. But they are talking about the process of how they get absorbed in the public health care system. When you want to be an employee in the public health care system, really, the job is advertised, you apply, and you compete you with never. anybody. Right. Now, yes. You will never apply. But those are the labor laws. You apply. But hold on. Okay. All right. Now, 
Just because you don't like That's the answer good. doesn't mean it can't be completed. It's okay? Good. You don't have to agree with it. No, I, no, I, no. I beseech no, you, no, you no. don't have to Maybe. agree with it. But that's the answer. No, no, no. Just it, yeah? We help them, it's good that they answer that way. They will never apply. So in order to solve from there, so that they don't compete with anybody, we absorb them. They don't compete with anybody. And when you absorb them, the process is different from when people have applied. applied. And, and it's a competitive says, process. Even took it in the chamber, the labor unions know it. And we said you must go renegotiate it back there. The issue of them being given one year contract is part of that process, but we are not going to dump them. If they want us not to go through absorption, then they must say dump everybody last step from the beginning, let's apply, and any member of the public can apply. No. And many of them are okay. not I, I need, now I, I'm they, gonna be, okay. Now they can't believe it without their choice. All right, I yes. understand there are so many issues including the ones affecting community health workers. So I it's appreciate a process. It. Yeah. The process of absorption follows that type of thing. But, but, but here's the thing. The this is a rare opportunity. Hold on. This is a rare opportunity to have the minister. It is very possible that we could spend the next hour talking about Nehau's problems, yeah. private sector problems, yeah. everybody's problems. I understand mm. that the questions have not been answered satisfactorily. But I think, to be fair, we've spent the last 15 minutes talking about community health workers pr uh, problems mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that we've resolved it it only means that this is not a platform where everyone's issues can be resolved because there are so many let's just acknowledge that you feel that you haven't answered but at the same time we have so many other problems that we need to address including one that was raised by Denosa that posts are being frozen and it's not just that I know that the medical deans have also raised that issue they've raised concerns about the training of registrars that has suffered and medical interns that should be in positions uh, that, that are funded but that is not happening minister how do you answer Really, I, 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 I've just explained to you how the stimulus package came in. It's a temporary measure. After I put it to the pre president and the premiers, that were suffering on the issue of human resources here because our budget had been cut. One of the resolutions was that the health budget, the public health budget, need to be recalibrated. And I've written to the Treasury to ask for that meeting, to recalibrate it. The, the issues you are raising, I'm not challenging them because they are true. For instance, in Gaute, where most of the registrars, registrars are specialists in training, where most of the registrars are trained because they've got most of the medical universities, in 2015, before the budget cuts, they've got now, in tw by 2018, half the number of registrars in training by 2015. We can't develop like that. It's a crisis, yes. But I am saying it's not something that is done because of poor planning in the health department. You need money to do that. Okay. Yes. L L L and that's why we want to rush and say all the money that is used in the private health care and failed. For instance, the tax credits to people who are on medical aids was 20 billion in 2015. It now increased to 26 billion in 2018. That money we needed to come into the public health care system. But the, to tax, fix this the, the current budget, didn't it say that there'll be a reduction in tax breaks and that's how the NHR is going to be funded? That's what I understood, well, Alex? Well, we, it's we, one of the methods. You yeah. cannot fund the, the so called NHI out of tax breaks. There's not mm. enough money in the tax break. Mm. It's, it, it requires about 150 billion rand, not 6 billion rand. So the 26 you billion rand gets nothing. And that's one of them. Okay. You need Nahau, many sources, what do you say? I can't find my them. microphones. Where are my microphones? Now, how we carry on speaking, please? Okay. Sanek is here as well. Pass the mic to Jack Bloom when you finish. No, no, no. When you finish, you pass to Jack Bloom. Please carry on. Now, there are there are key few things that South Africa is facing, particularly in health. One of them is commodity. The other one is profit. As long as health is a profit to those who are able to sell it. Those who do not have money will not have chance to access health. The problem, the problem of private health taking every money, the question of inequality in funding of health is a source problem of everything. Mm. You can bring any minister, getting from DA, getting from America, it will fail because Imali, Iagwinda were wrong. Who lives in that's 
Okay, let's just be real here. Of course, a lot of the anger is directed at the public health care system because it accommodates millions of our people. We know that. Underfunded, more money is concentrated to a few. But, you know, I, I can't help but just fixate on even the ownership models in the private healthcare sector. Just very quickly, you've got Remgro, right? Yeah. That owns MediClinic, right? It has the largest bulk of shares in Rand Merchant Holdings. Rand Merchant Holdings owns 25% of Discovery, 25% of MMI, which yeah. you would know as Momentum. So I'm just pulling my hair because it seems as if they're just these funny networks where people's tentacles are just spreading. You're in medical aid, you're in private health care, you are in this. It's just dirty and it leaves the patients, patient disadvantaged. Board of Healthcare funders, how do you plead? There's no recession in, in health. Yeah. In health care, there's no such thing as recession. So we can go through an economic recession out there since 2008 till now, but people need health care still January to December. And that's the opportunity, and that's why they invest in it. But you as can't long as there's profits the to be made, people will invest there. But what, do we need more regulations, Mr. Archer? Absolutely. Yes, really. I, think the, I think there's no, no question that uh, both sectors need uh, to be re-regulated. Uh, there needs a lot of reform needs to take place. <coughs> but I think, I, I, you know, and, and I think ultimately the future for this country is some form of universal health care. Yes. that both the private and the public sector can participate but in. But you've said that it's high or thick on ideology and very thin on substance. What did you mean well, by that? Well, I think that? that's true because the, the basis of the current offer or the <laughs> proposal is not based on research that is credible. And but I think that's... That, that is I think... Okay. You don't have a mic. 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 If the private... If... if if the current <laughs> if okay. the current national health insurance is not enough, what is it that you are, that what you are proposing? Okay. Because well, let him speak. because at the present moment you are criminally getting money yeah. and you are criminally yeah. refusing yeah. or to other people to succeed. How to what is it that you are suggesting that we must do in order to fix the health system in South Africa? Okay. What are you doing about the fact that many nurses do not, doctors do not come to public sector, but in in your racist private health? I have experienced that in Garden Garden in in, in, Garden, in Garden Hospital here in Bedford View, where I'm taken next to a white man, I'm suddenly changed into another in a another level because this white man says I'm making noise. I'm not being asked. I'm not being questioned. I'm just being judged. I'm not being taken to trial. I couldn't defend myself. Okay. What do you do about the racist private house? Okay. 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 Do you, do you want to respond to that yes, just to well, remember who you represent here? Maybe you can remind us again. You I, I am the CEO of the South African Private Practitioners Forum. Not the medical oh, aids. Yeah. No, no, I don't represent the medical aids. I represent doctors and physiotherapists yeah. and optometrists and various other organizations that work in the private sector. Okay, all right. And you're, uh, you're, you're, carry on, carry on. I, I firmly believe that the private sector has a very positive role to play in developing healthcare services okay. Okay. In, in South Africa. I think the private sector has been given a bad reputation unfairly. And I would just like to just refer to something that the minister has said. And he repeatedly makes this, this statement. And it's an untrue statement, unfortunately. Which is? He says that the, the, the country spends... 4.6% of GDP on private health care. That, that is not public money. That is money that pe the people... <laughs> let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Can, that, can I explain? Let him finish. Okay. And Alex, I want you to come in here. The, the Hold people, on. The people who are fortunate and, enough to afford private health care, pay for their private health care through their own funds. It's not taxpayers' money. But those funds also, the people who enjoy, and it is, okay, look, I mean, we live in a very unfair, unequal finish. society. So we acknowledge that. Okay. You know. okay. 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 Okay.
can't hear a word he's saying. Everybody just hold on. No, no. Nobody's going to speak if we're all shouting. Nobody's going to speak if we're all shouting. The long and short, the long and short of it, you're saying that the minister should not use that statistic because it comes from Reedy's income, from uh, 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 Mr. Yawa's income, from Fadiheva's income. Therefore, it shouldn't be counted. I, 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 don't, I don't think it helps to advance the but debate. It's, yeah, it's, you, are it's, it you subsidize the, debate. the private sector as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, the private sector has a very positive role to play if it was allowed to. And ultimately, I think what we should be working towards is a harmonization of the two sectors okay. to result in a universal health care that is fair and equitable. I don't think we can just divorce ourselves from our nation's problems. No, and not. let me tell you what I mean. Let me tell you what I mean. If you look at, for example, uh, ICU beds, right? In Gauteng alone, in Gauteng alone, seven, right, per 100,000 people. But in the private sector, 55 beds yeah. per 100,000 people licensed from the state. And I'm just saying that those figures just don't make and sense. We really, can't say, we, we I'm just paying for medical aid from my salary, so bugger you all. I don't think we're trying to hide behind that or deny that. That, yeah. that is an inequitable situation and it needs to be changed. Yes. We all, I think anyone who's thinking about it acknowledges that that is not, that is not the way things should remain. We need to Do change. Do you support the NHI? Is it the I right? support universal health care that provides equitable care Alex, to all Alex, Africa. and then Jose. I'm coming to you, Jose, next, and Mr. Saunders. Alex? Yeah, so, so Alex? If, if we all speak together, then we're not going to hear each other. Alex? Okay, so you have to distinguish between the revenue that comes into the private sector side and the services that are in that side. Yeah. So on the one hand, the public sector has been licensing that oversupply yes. of beds. Oversupply. And they have been licensing it within a framework in which there is fee for service. Now that is where people pay per service in the private sector, which is highly inefficient. Mm. And there has been no regulatory change in the mm. private sector for the past 10 years and not mm. for the past 40, 15 years. Mm. The health market inquiry has identified the kind of structural issues that need to be introduced to address both that, both that vertical integration that you just mm. described with Remgro, and there is an equally pernicious structure around Afrocentric. Yes. And both of yes. those systems Medicare. are actually driven off these inefficiencies. They, can, they cannot be addressed by the public, private sector on its own. It requires government intervention, yes. and there has been none. Yes. Okay. So I'm from People's Health Movement. So I want to pick up on two points. One on the human resource issue, which is a crisis. So we in PHM have been supporting community health workers. I was involved in a submission to the Treasury called the investment case for community health workers because Treasury need to be convinced that it was worth investing in them. And what we showed, and the high-level panel that the minister talks about, showed that actually there are costs, obviously, of employment, but there are many, <laughs> many more benefits. <coughs> benefits of savings, of avoided hospitalization, mm. and most importantly, Unemployed women getting jobs. Yes. They spend their money in the South African economy. They don't put their money offshore. Mm. So the multiplier effect is huge. So what's the big elephant in the room yet? Hasn't been mentioned once. Yeah, tell me. It's the Treasury. The Treasury is cutting funds. The minister can't say it because he's part of the ruling party. <laughs> The problem is the Ministry of Finance and our economic development path ain't working. It's obvious. Lower and lower growth every year. So why don't we invest in human capital? Hmm. It will ease suffering. It will create jobs in a large number and it will give community health work. So lastly, NHI. Quickly. I support NHI, but the minister went to Brazil to see NHI. That's where he borrowed it from, but he's doing NHI on the cheap. In Brazil, they invested 16 state schools of public health. Yes. Nothing invested here. Yes. Millions of health workers trained. 
Yes. The concentration of community health is mm -hmm. much But he said there's higher no money. There's no money. You but also said in the no first. There's no money. Yeah, so you, he said so. You also just said so. Treasury. Okay, Kosi Litape. Kosi. 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 Can I? Okay, can let Kosi speak. And Sanek. Kosi, Sanek, then you coming in. I, I think we need to go back. Okay, to, all right. We need Wait. to go back to the beginning. I just spoke about the crisis uh, in the 80s. And he alludes it to the failing economy. No, it was an ideological decision mm. to structurally defund public health and to build the private health care system based on an act of parliament. Yeah. So what is striving out there is not private money. It's privatized money. Yeah. The whites were preparing to take out a public health care system that is working, to create one for themselves and clever blacks like me. <laughs> That's what you have. So you can't, th this, was, this was a deliberate yes. act. It was not a default position. Yes. That is why it is driven by an act of, of parliament. parliament. Now this fallacy that says it's private money, it's bulldust because this is privatized money. So what... Uh, Medical Schemes, schemes Act. Medical Schemes Act. If you had no Medical uh, Schemes Act, you'd have no regulation of the health insurance environment. Uh, health uh, insurance uh, Alex, would love it. Alex, you, 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 you'll have your opportunity. Okay. You will have your okay. opportunity to, to protect privilege. Now, the key, the, issue, the key issue, the key issue is this. You have men like this Moron. that will not use their intellect for a better South Africa for all of us. They will use their intellect for separateness. Okay. All and right. we need leadership Sorry. that will call them out Let's to say, if you are saying the root is universal health care, what is your contribution to get us there? Let's give him a so that all the naysayers must stay out so that we can build a better Are South you Africa a for all Are of us. Okay, Black guys, hold on. There's an accusation. White. Let him answer. Is, no, 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 sorry. It's a statutory fund. Okay. It's not like private schools okay. where you are using your private money without an act the of parliament that okay. separates us from have and have not. Okay, quickly, Alex, okay. how do you answer? But hold on. You've got to hear. You can't clap for a point and not want to hear the counterpoint, even when you don't agree with it. Let's hear. Okay, so firstly, the issue is he claims that, it med that the Medical Schemes Act creates medical schemes. The Medical Schemes Act regulates mm -hmm. health insurance. It doesn't create them. The problem in all health insurance around the world is that if you do not regulate it mm. properly, it eats up your health system. Do you support more regulation? I support the proper regulation. Yes. So when we look at, when we look at issues like the... The health market inquiry, when you're starting to have an intelligent discussion about how you structure a private health system, it takes us somewhere. It's got nothing to do with... No, you, uh, you, uh, okay, no, 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 wait. Let it finish your point. No, no, no. no. You yeah. see, you and see, Mr. Yawa, Mr. Yawa, Mr. Yawa, no, 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 just no, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, Speak and then uh, I know, but you might be there are there are two things uh, which I think. Don't worry, your microphone yes. is on. The layers are not on. This year marks 25 years after. After I don't know if it's a democracy or it's a free doom, whatever. Oh, come on, there's a so, democracy. Come. Go, it, it, go. it is gonna be wrong leadership to blame everything that is happening to the apartheid era. 2012 to 2017, the Minister of Health told us about the NHI pilot project in 10 districts. Before we can move ahead, the minister must tell us, what have we done in those NHI? Two ways to start. Okay. Two, yeah. two, two. Let him finish, let two, him finish. Two, two, you coming on next. Two, we cannot keep on blaming issues of the past. Brian Songwa stole 1.2 billion rands in Houghton. Wow. Hey, Danny Matang, who massacred people in Lava City, man. What are we saying about that? Okay, we what? cannot... Peggy I want. Peggy Sisa. I want. Peggy Sisa. Okay, hold. Let Peggy Sisa speak. Well, I do. I certainly agree with Anele, right? The minister 2012 Smongile. said. Carry on. 2012, you said to us, hey, we're going to solve the health care crisis, right? And now, 26, 2019, we are saying to you, where, what lessons have you learned from the piloting? And, okay. Okay. and, and, and. 
what are the what, what are the lessons we had? What was the Office of the Standards Compliance, right? Yeah. Right now, so where is five that? out of six hundred and ninety-six. Yes. And where are the inspect where are the inspectors? What happened? Right now, the problem with the NHI is that it moved from. It said we'll pilot, and now we're looking at the fi finance, right? And therefore, it leaves all of us wondering what is happening. Okay, the minister so, will answer in a so, moment. But so Jack, can Blue, I just ask? Okay, quickly. The medical. I, I agree with him that right with the medical act that it's actually it, we need to regulate that. That we're not going to have a system where we'll not have medical aid. No, no, no. I think okay. what you are missing is that you are separating the haves from the have-nots, yeah. and that's the fundamental no, problem. I'm no. not saying. If you pull a fund for all of us, it does not need to be regulated. Okay. But okay. you no, cannot no, no, wait, continue wait. with a separateness. I, I really think that the minister has to address the issue of poor management in our in our health system, the provincial. It's a provincial function, and and frankly, corruption. You know, we've heard about Brian Shlongwa. Why isn't he in jail? Quite frankly, why isn't Kudani Mishlangu in jail for the <coughs> Isedi Mani disaster? Let him finish. Let him and, and Mr. Finish. Minister, you know, well, hundreds of people died in KwaZulu Natal because of a, a, a corrupt tender because of cancer. And and you know, so the only uh, proper health system that the Auditor General says night things about is Western Cape but with the Auditor General says about the other five, eight, uh, the other eight uh, provincial health systems is terrible. In Gauteng they're unable to even spend in, in Gauteng they can't even spend the infrastructure money. Mr. Minister when you opened the new Natal Strait Hospital four years ago you promised that there would be a new hospital in Soshengugwe. How come they can't spend available funds? The, the inefficiency, the corruption I mean you really need to fix up public health, do what you can with what powers you have. But uh, but what you're trying to do here is just, uh, you know, you can't do it unless we have a decent public okay. health system and we've got to address corruption seriously. Okay. All right. Hold on. I think it's time for the minister. Hold on. No. The minister is going to answer. The, mi the minister is going to answer. The minister is going to answer. Nobody else is going to speak but the minister right now. We're coming to you. The minister is going to speak. The minister is going to speak. You are raising issues. You are raising issues that require the minister to respond, but you are shouting your lungs out and not letting him respond. Minister, as you respond, I do want to add something that is relevant to what you asked, because we're not gonna go back to it. That certain provinces, right have a total deficit i think except the uh, and, and the eastern cape northern cape and free state are more vulnerable they have a, dis a deficit of 8.4 billion rand if i'm not mistaken but add to that on the point that was uh, made that the medical claims against certain health departments is far more than their allocation for the tax year 2018 2019 and in the eastern cape three times more. Those are structural problems. Those speak to the heart. <coughs> Those speak to people not respecting the law. And therefore, there are no resources to provide this health care that we are talking about. What are you doing about it? Freddy, let, let me start with this issue of regulation. Because people are assuming here that we are doing nothing. In 2010, I, you know, when you start regulating and changing a system in this new democracy we are having, and people are used to that. There is a word called consultation. You don't just wake up and, because I'm not a dictator. I can do that anytime. I called all the stakeholders to a meeting. Some of them refused to come, especially the health association, the, 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 the private hospitals groups and all that. And the biggest they medical refused school. refused to come here. Yes, but anyway, they refused yep. to come for me to start that. What then I did was to go to the competition commission and tell them, that this is happening in private health care, taking money from the public is not correct. It needs to be corrected. It took me four years to convince the competition commission because they didn't believe me. After four years, it's then that they instituted the public market inquiry by Chief Justice Mwobo because I wanted it to be professional, not just me so that they would believe I'm political. Is private health care expensive? Are things wrong? Some of the things you have mentioned, what happened? which maybe you don't know, they got all the big lawyers in the country to stop Chief Justice Mwobo. 
In fact, when I went to look, when I went to look for a lawyer, I found that all these senior counsels, which appear in the constitutional court, have been taken over by all the private hospitals to stop this change. I got only one. I got only one senior counsel who was not taken, and that is Vincent Maleka. He is the, he's the only one who, 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 who then is with us. The rest are there. They stop chief justice more all the time. Even this report, you remember, it, it kept on being postponed. Mm. Why? Did you see the preliminary report? It confirms what I said about private health care. It says we must regulate. It even shows, for instance, that the average rate of a Caesar in the world is 15%. In private health care in South Africa, is 75%. Mm. Because it's about money. Yes. yes. So that is the, yes. I, I want you to know that. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's why. That's why. That's why, really. That's why. When they say I'm not regulating, it's not true. When we released, when we released the NHI bill, we released it with another bill, the Medical Schemes Amendment Bill, for regulation, for regulation. And we are waiting, yes, for regulation. But we said we can't go on with that bill until Chief Justice Mnobo reports because many things which is going to recommend must go into a new bill that regulates. So it's not true that we've been sitting. How long did that commission take? Four years when we're giving one year because it was being challenged all the time. Mm -hmm. So the stories that no, nothing is happening, there's no regulation. That's are not so that's true. a private, but the yes. issues raised here yes. about the public sector yes. in Jack Bloom, quickly. I am not going to deny the issue of corruption and mismanagement and all that. People are talking as if we are not the ones who put systems into place because of being Your aware of that. Your systems are not working. Yes, no. Let, let me start with the first one. And, and I, my brother, my heart is bleeding for you about what happened to you. But we established the office of the health umbad specifically. And people were asking me, what is this office? It has never been there in South Africa. I said the whole health umbad is a public protector for health because I wanted them to, co to, to, to protect the public. So my brother, I would like you to go there. You, when you go to the hospital for the people who perpetuated this act, they can't answer because they perpetuated it. They need somebody to So he must it. go to the health ombuds. Yes. He must go I'll to the health ombuds. I'll take him ombuds. there. Now, the issues. Okay, the minister is have... making a public commitment. Yes. He's taking you to the health ombuds. Yes. And I want go. you to know 40% yes. of the complaints to the health ombuds, uh, uh, Professor Malikapuru, 40% of them are in Gauteng. So yes. you are one of those statistics. You must take them you, there. Yeah? The other issue, I mean, they keep on mentioning Brian Tongwe, Ketane Mashangu. Those issues are not in my hands anymore. They are in the criminal justice system. And they are still on. I can't sit here and report about them. But the process is on. Nobody said that thing is closed. It's, 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 it's closed. No. There are processes that are still there, but which Minister I am not in charge of. Okay. But they are, they, yes. But, but hold on. There's very little, there's very little to be, there's very little to be cheerful about when you look at the autonomy and the power that the provinces have, mm -hmm. right? That life essay demaining happened, and it was a provincial matter. Uh, was it the, 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 the free state that was put under administration? Or the free not state what? was put under administration? And in Gauteng, the Northwest, and there was an intervention uh, task team for uh, Gauteng. I'm very concerned that here you are as the minister, we have questions to ask of you. But there does seem to be operationally a problem between what national health says and what the provinces are doing because they, they, they are running, they seem to have far more authority. And let me tell you what does concern me. When you look at Mr. Tito Mboweni's budget, what he did was announced more funds, directed them at the provinces to fix infrastructure and hire more healthcare workers. When all of us were just expecting a central fund that will be run uh, by, 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 by national. So you don't have the powers that you... Well, Ready? you look at the National Health Act. If you take that bill which we passed to, to, to resolve all those things you are, you are saying, we flagged 12 acts which need to be amended. Mm -hmm. These are the acts passed during, after 1994 when we were democracy in the country. And we are raising the shortcomings of some of them. If you look at life is demanding, the ombuds actually picked that up and said the National Health Act 2003 needs to be amended. He also said the, 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 the Mental Health Act 2002 needs to be amended. We took that process 
to the people who amend acts, and I'm sure you are aware, is that group of lawyers called... Uh, 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 Stated. <laughs> no, it's not state law. It's legal. It's law, law reform commission. Okay. That issue is with law reform commission, and they are saying there are 108 acts in South Africa that govern health, and 39 of them need to be changed. So we won't and have the NHI. So that will have NHI because NHI is national. So did you hear? We can't. So we can't have NHI until those pieces no, of no, legislation. No, no, no. It's part of the process. Okay. It's part of the process, Same lady. Thing. For yes. Because there's a lot of duplication. No, it's part of the it's part of the same process. That you must change this ad, you must change that. I'm Buita Weti, the author of Victory and Justice at Last. I'm that mother who lost a child due to mismanagement. Uh, I remember, Minister, we were, you were in the special assignment on the 6th of April uh, 2016, where it was an international special assignment, where my case was incorporated in that. I, was, I cried when I listened to you saying the government is losing money due to claims. Hmm. And I, I, I responded to the journalist then, that I wonder, does the minister follow up these claims? Why claiming? So that you can understand what we are going through on the ground. But I never got a response from that. Uh, I lost, uh, before my daughter died, my daughter died on the 11th, on the 12th of August, 2005, under the supervision of a drunken doctor let me just remind our, our, our audience that your matter actually went to court. Yes. He was charged with culpable homicide, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And over and above that, he tried to appeal. This is in Whitbank, right? Yes. He appealed, and the case was just thrown out. He wasn't was given an opportunity. To, and you've just used your pain and your experience to support, to support women who... Okay, all right. Buyi... Bui I've, has, I've has got this book for the minister. Victory and Justice and at Last. She is an activist gathering women who are going through this. Your baby, the procedure, was not done according to the regulations. He actually cut, it, cut my daughter's uh, vagina from the vagina to the anus. A fourth third degree, which uh, our president here knows about it. I even spoke to you, uh, uh, President Itlape because of my case. My case took 12 years. This is 13 years. My grandchild is now 13 years. Okay. Uh, my brother, we are talking of three months. And I think the minister can learn out of my case. This doctor became the first doctor in South Africa to be convicted for, for, oh, for death, for couple homicide. Then that made me, as a mother, to do a research of other women and other husbands and other children that lost their mothers during birth and, that, and, the, and the husband that lost their wives. My case is still with HPCSA. 13 years later, the doctor is still practicing uh, uh, President Lutape. 13 years later, I've got this book so that you can, I've got these books can I give it to, to, you? Give, to give to both of them. Minister of Health, yeah? I have, I, I'm giving you this book so that you can understand my pain, before my daughter died, I was with this gynecologist because my daughter was staying, was studying at after university. I was in Whitbank. I was pregnant, 12 weeks pregnant. And this doctor, I was pregnant twins. And this doctor said my twins were not growing. And he gave me a tablet to insert saying he wants the twins to grow. The next day, miscarriage. Oh, no. Miscarriage. But I thought it was natural masquerade. When my daughter came back to deliver from Gauteng to Wheatbank, I took this child of mine to the same doctor because I thought my issue yeah. was just a natural birth. Because we put our lives and trust to these doctors that we enrich their pocket and they want more and more and more. Okay. My daughter was supposed to give natural birth and he forwarded, he, he, he forwarded the date to the 11th instead of the national birth 15, and he mismanaged 
my the process, the entire process, and my daughter died. I think the first thing is to say that I feel your pain. And that uh, additional information is that you reported it to cancer before, and there was a process in 2007, and the matter was concluded by cancer. And, and the doctor was given an option of a fine, 10, or, to, fine. or okay. to proceed to conduct inquiry. Uh, the doctor then paid the fine, and the mother um, and uh, courage to your spirit took the matter to court. He was convicted and the matter was appealed. And I hear from you that uh, the appeal been has been denied and has been finalized uh, on Thursday. So what you have now is a court decision. And court decisions are superior to our decisions. And that will compel us to revisit the matter and look at the situation. Do you make that commitment right here, right and now? I make the commitment to you that we will follow due process to follow this matter. What, what, do you, what do we do with our emotions? What do we do? What Just do understand that uh, there are, we are in a okay, court quickly. system with a constitution. And this is not the first time that this has happened. A similar incident happened with Stephen Bantubiko, where the council of the time did not do justice to the doctors that handled that matter. I'm coming to you. And the nurses want a chance to respond? You. process. The matter was reviewed by cancer, and we will follow due process, and we will handle the matter, and we will keep the minister informed. Melili, and what do we do with this so this much pain? And Sanek, you coming next, yeah. and you and the nurses, so I'm coming to you. So in the terms of lady, mine seems to be a lesser problem. It's not, it's not. In fact, my worry is that when I first had cancer, I was 63. I didn't need to have a child. But my worry was that there were younger women who need the same treatment like mine, Herceptin, which is not available in public hospitals. And they, they get given chemo only to die six months later, yeah. knowing very well it is not addressing their cancer. Mm -hmm. We've had women die because they didn't have access to Herceptin, which you can only find in private hospitals, and it charges an arm and a leg. Yeah. I paid 500 besides the other monies that I paid, I mean, I've got medical aid. It got depleted. Mm. And I had to use my 500, which was for my nest egg, but thank God I had it. How many have it? Yeah, okay. Should they die yeah. because they don't have money? Okay, I'm sorry, you've been waiting for a very long, you've been standing for a very long time, and Sanek as well, I acknowledge you, I apologize. I'm coming to you, I pointed I'm at you about an hour ago, I apologize. I'm After that, I'm coming to you, and then at the corner there. I'm yeah? speaking from a, a, pub, a, a private health as Okay. I'm, I'm speaking from private health. I'm a nurse by profession, and I know on a daily basis, I see the suffering of nurses, yeah. the way we are abused by doctors, the way we are abused by the very same uh, private hospital managers and the whole group. And they have no concern about the patient. Just the other day, a CEO of the company came. He was a patient. And there were talks that the CEO is coming. I said, no, you wait a bit. All I know is a patient. I'm going to treat each and every patient the same. I'm not going to treat no CEO. I do not have a CEO as a patient. I have a patient. And the management and the government, they are very quick to move and shift the blame to nurses. Yes. We are suffering, we are working, we are being overworked and underpaid. Yes. Okay. We are not taken serious. Yes. We have our issues in bargaining chambers, we have our issues in, in private hospitals as, as different as they are, and we are not taken serious. Okay. We are abused by the very same doctors that failed the poor woman that is sitting here right now. Okay. We can no longer take it, we can no longer tolerate it, we have had enough. And the very problem with the private health is that they do not the NHI because they know they are benefiting in their pockets. Oh, it's wait, for them wait, wait, to benefit what do you mean? and they have what, what nothing do you mean? to do, what do you with, mean? The do do with the working class and they have nothing to do what do you with mean? the poor. What do you the, mean the, the private sector is benefiting from, the, this is important, from the NHI, tell me. They are benefiting because they know that the NHI will bridge the gap be between uh, 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 the inequality. So if NHI is here, we are all equal. There's no black, there's no white, we are equal. Okay, Sanek, I'm coming to you next. Sanek. Sonic. Uh.
I think uh, what's, I what's important is that we must not be pathologists because they deal with the problem after the patient has died. Yes. We must actually move to the issue of prevention. Yeah. Uh, so in, in October last year, the president took on the issue around fixing healthcare system. And 600 of us and most of the people that are here were part of that engagement. And there's been conversation by all the role players in terms of what it is that they need to do in order to solve the problem. So it's important that we must bother, bother, but we need to move to solutions. And many of us are part and parcel of that particular process because what we want at the end of the day is to fix the health system. But we must not put the, you know, the, the issue of let's fix it before we have the NHI. The NHI, it is the way for us to deal with the current challenge that we have. Okay, so solutions. A solutions based on very quickly, Dinosa? Yeah, I wanted to say, I think we, we don't imagine what goes into a person in a rural area. You go to Limpopo, Northwest, Mpumalanga. Whenever a person is being diagnosed with cancer, it's a death sentence. Because for them to be treated, they must come to Pretoria. Yeah. And for them to get to Pretoria, they must get an appointment of nine months. Yeah. In the process, they die. Waiting time. And most of them... Most of them don't even get diagnosed properly because if you are in, in Toyando or Malamlel, you'll be referred to Pulukwan. It will take you three months to get that appointment. In the meantime, even my own families are dying, including nurses. Nurses are public people. We are part of you as a community. We can never want people to die. Right. We are saying we are together. We must fight this war together. But we want a functioning system where if you have... If you have cancer, you cannot pass Mill Park. You must be able to access Mill Park. Even if you don't have okay. Some of the problems we have, I thought the minister was going to touch on this. Can we stop this thing when, as healthcare workers, we are on strike, we disrupt services to the patients? It is our constitutional right. As much as it is their right to strike, it is our right to access healthcare services. Right? Okay, last thoughts. Last thoughts. Last thoughts. You think. Carry on, speak. Your mic is on. Your I mic think, is on. Your think, mic is on. I think I just the, the, I think I think for me it's again just going back to Mia's point that if we want to have a successful NHI, yeah. we have to fix the system. Thank you very much. We're wrapping up the show. Minister. As I'm listening here, nobody, nobody in this house was able to put a convincing argument why we don't need NHI. True. They are talking about processes. We need it as of yesterday. Mel Lillian, what you said about Herceptin is exactly why we need NHI. Herceptin is 24,000 rand per dose. Yeah. And a cost of treatment is 17 doses. Yeah. Which women can pay for that? Or out of their own pocket. I actually went to that company. It's a Swiss company. Mm -hmm. I convinced them. Last year in October, I announced it. It's only that because in the healthcare system, people pick up the negatives. I spoke to Roger. We are going to bring down the price of a safety from 24,000 rand to 6,000 rand because it's a government program now. So what is left is for the provinces to start purchasing it. But I also want people to understand it's, it's not a, a, a panacea because not all women can use a safety no. because yes, certain genes only use it for those women whose genes agree. But the overall thing is all these things we are talking about Unless we have got universal health care uh, coverage, as in NHI, we'll never be able to solve these problems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you very much for watching the big debate. Nothing is resolved. We continue to deepen the dialogue and hopefully find each other. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Reggie.